What's up everybody, Alex here, and welcome to the Dota Underlords Best Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you rank up in Dota Underlords. Now this week we are starting with 4 Heartless and Demons, and this build has been truly remarkable. And it, it kind of goes in hand in hand with the idea of getting to 7 and hard rolling for 3 star tier 3s. You are looking to 3 star Spectre and Terrorblade uh, in particular. You'll take Lycan and Lifesteal if you can, and hey Alchemist, although Contested is a great call as well. Now the nice thing about this build as well is that uh, if you're you know if you're at uh, level 7 for instance, you haven't reached there yet, you can take one of the Demons out. Uh, you know, for instance, if you're chasing a 3 star Spectre or if you have a, uh, you know, a 1 star Terrorblade, take the Terrorblade out. Have your best units on. I do recommend that you do run Heartless for with one of either Spectre or Terrorblade. Of course, the Fallen Impact here is a nice little heal. You want it as well, but it's not it's not that like it's not that important to the build overall. But for Heartless is really important to the build and uh, you want to position them in a way also an Essex is a must pick with this build because the little demon archer uh, amplifies the damage potential of your two demons now the key thing in here uh, to understand is that you want to position them so that specter and terribly don't cast at the same time I mean you could do this the problem with this though is that you're gonna have terribly and specter try and cast at the same time they'll be taking incoming damage and one of them will be silenced right the way I've been doing it is when this positioning here you're gonna have terribly come along on the outside here with the uh, with the life stealer, and the result of that is that you're gonna have Spectre Spectral Dagger first, and then after about four seconds, Terrorblade will do uh, his uh, health swap. So, uh, really effective timing of the Demon Synergy. Anyways, guys, a fantastic build, one that I've been having success with. Let's talk about build number two. And for the second build of the week, we're talking about Heartless, Poisoners, and Brutes. And guys, this build has been truly fantastic. And the reason for this is because, once again, Heartless is just kind of overtuned right now. They're just a damn good alliance. I still think that, you know, Pudge is one of the best units in the game right now. And uh, what you're going to do here is you're taking advantage of the Heartless and the physical damage of the Poisoner effect. And what you're going to do is you're gonna also going to finish Brutes with a Fedora. The idea here is to Fedora someone like Drow Ranger, who has an absolutely incredible attack range and is going to help to apply that brute bonus across the field. You're going to be running Pudge and Alchemist as tanks. Of course, you want to get after that Doom if you can with the Lifestealer as well. You're going to be using Viper kind of like a, uh, a ranged unit, less <laughs> less like a like an assassin. Well, he's not an assassin anymore, but he still jumps. But what you might even want to do is position like this so that Viper's likely to pick up a target within the first couple squares and stay in position and just auto attack. The reason for this is because you want to stack the poison, right? Uh, you can also do the same thing with uh, with the Queen of Pain if you wish. The reason for that is if you want to conserve her health, you don't want her just jumping over there and getting blown up. You can use her as a straight up ranged unit by putting her in position of the uh, in position to actually attack with her ranged attack and stay within range of the Drow Ranger. You're going NO, either version of NO in this if you can. If you get to 10, I absolutely love the variant where you can run a Puck. Puck does an incredible amount of damage. You can also go DK if you want. I just like adding that Dragon Synergy at the end. Plus, it allows you to put, uh, put a situation where you can actually run Viper. You can do something like this, for instance. You can run Viper, have him jump, and basically let Corrosive Skin do work. At the end of the day, it's been an incredible build. And let's talk about build number 3. You know, when I came up with this build, I almost kind of questioned it myself. I thought to myself, could this build truly be that good? And my experience has been incredibly positive. Now, basically what this is, this is a level 6 assassin build with swordsmen and dragons. Now, the swordsman bonus, uh, you, you know, you'll take it. It's not, it's not crazy or anything like that. But hey, 10% uh, damage bonus, you'll take it. But the key thing is, is Pangolier. Pangolier is, is what brings the swordsman online. Realistically, this is... Dragon, 6 Assassin. You're focusing on getting the 6 Assassin first. You're hoping for the carry from Slark. Hopefully you can 3-star Slark. You're taking as many masks of madness as you can for Slark and PA if you can. Battle Fury and Ember Spirit as well. You can also go, uh, you know, uh, you can also go the uh, Restore Circlet on Ember Spirit as well if you wish. If you end up uh, going with, for instance, if you want to go Enthrall any over Enno and you have the Queen of Pain, you can get the... Uh, the circlet onto Ember Spirit to amplify his uh, sight of uh, fist damage. But Pangolier here, Pangolier is pretty interesting because with Pangolier, um, what, what you can do, I kind of missed it there, sorry. Uh, with Pangolier, the key thing is, is shield crash. You get a blade mail on Pangolier, and what he does, he jumps in the air, does AoE damage, and everyone focus fires him. Everyone focus fires him, and he pulls damage and kind of aggro off of your assassins. That's the most important part. Everyone's going to focus fire Pangolier. He's going to take in a bunch of damage. He's going to reflect a bunch back with Blade Mail while your assassins are doing work. This has been one of the most interesting ways of using Pangolier, in my opinion. Literally single tank Pango. 
have Eno kind of jump and stun and do all that stuff. You have DK and Puck here as well. Remember, the dragons are a splash. The key thing here is you have the swordsmen and the uh, the assassins. The uh, the dragons come in late as a splash, okay? But overall, this build has been truly fantastic. It's been a lot of fun, and it's very unique. It's a very unique take on six assassins, and I hope it does well for you. All right, now in this build, we've been talking about, especially on Twitch, about the idea of getting to level seven and then hard rolling for three star tier three units. It has been one of the most successful strategies that I've been uh, that I've been doing in the past little while here. And uh, here's a perfect example of it: you go to six savage. And then you add Slark Rooney here. Slark with his Mask of Madness, getting the benefit of Six Savage, becomes an absolutely unkillable monster because the damage ramps up so fast, the lifesteal is so extreme that Slark, like I've seen Slark literally do almost 30,000 damage in a single round. Completely out of control. And I'm not even exaggerating. It is one of those builds that completely blows your mind when you see it in practice. And uh, you know what? The 6 Savage, rush to 6 Savage, at level 7, you add in your Slark. I've also seen success doing this with uh, with the uh, the Queen of, uh, not Queen of Pain, why am I calling Spectre Queen of Pain? Run the Spectre here, Spectral Dagger across the team, uh, you know, and then watch as Spectre melts everybody at, uh, at 3 stars. You can also, of course, go to level 8 once you 3 star one of these guys and run both of them, because that's beautiful too. But at the end of the day, the nice thing about Spectre and Slark is that they synergize amazingly with Savage. Spectre with her attack speed uh, buff, and with Slark with the Mask of Madness and the, uh, the, the Essence Shift, right? Essence Shift, sorry. The result is a build that is truly remarkable. One that I have had nothing but success with, and it might be one of my favorite in the current meta, and one that I'm sure you're going to see me running on Twitch TV very frequently. What once was a complete and utter meme is now an extremely viable build in the current meta. And I'm talking about six humans. Can you believe this is a six human build and it's good? Can you believe that? Two dragons, six humans, and six mages. This build is ridiculous. I cannot believe how good this build is. You're running very high impact units like the Storm Spirit kind of ball lightning all the way across here. And again, you don't want... Okay, here's the mistake I see people making when they run this build. They're running mages. They know they're running mages, and they pick up like Yule Scepter, and they pick up Void Stone. No, you don't pick up those items. If you're running six mages, the the mana means nothing. You want to amplify their damage dealing capability. You take Kea. You take uh, Octarines whenever possible. Let let uh, Lena just completely delete people. You could even honestly, you could run Refresher on Lena, and that's totally fine as well. You can you can switch these items around. Really, you could. You could do this. You could put K on Keeper of the Light. You could put Refresher on Lena and just watch people get deleted. Now, I would I would venture to say that this is probably the best uh, version of this build, but hey, it's up to you. I've seen nothing but success with six humans, six uh, six mage, and then splashing in those dragons at the end. Again, Dragon Knight would be the last one in because even as a just standard unit, Puck with just the Mage Alliance does incredible amount of damage with the Illusionary Orb. You add in the uh, the DK. You're activating. Uh, knights here, and you act obviously activate three. Uh, Lycan would come out. You'd run Lycan, and you'd replace Lycan with the, uh, the the DK, right, as your sixth. But anyways, a truly phenomenal build, one that I've been winning games with, and one that I hope you guys find success with as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers. Take care, everyone, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day.